We are so glad that you joined us for worship today on this Palm Sunday weekend. We are going to be looking at the question of what do you do when the world seems upside down? And in a way, today seems upside down. We were anticipating a full church with people waving palm branches in their hands as we celebrated Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. And instead, we are having to do this virtual worship instead, and we even canceled the order of palm branches because there's no one here to wave them. We did have a few from last year that were saved, and so I'm just going to show you to say that these are shriveled. They look kind of like corn stalks, and this is all that we had. But instead of feeling defeated about this, we decided that we would have a virtual palm wave. So we asked all of our members here at Living Lord if they would send a photo or a clip of them waving either their palms or a coloring sheet or some leaf or some foliage from their yard so that we can celebrate Christ's entrance into Jerusalem, not as a historical event, but as something that is happening right here and now at Living Lord Lutheran Church, we are going to show these virtual palm waves as we read the gospel from Matthew 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. It was upside down. Everyone was asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends our gospel reading and our virtual wave palm, or palm wave rather. As I said, everything was upside down on that very first Palm Sunday too. The people expected a king or a general riding a warrior horse with chariots, someone who would take power and kick out the Romans, and instead they got Jesus on a donkey. Now, we've also been surprised in this last month. Something that we would have never foreseen is that our world has been turned upside down by the coronavirus pandemic. We have been humbled also. The stock market is down, the schools are closed, the grocery stores are empty, hospitals are filling up, unemployment is increasing. So that's why I asked the question, what do you do when the world is upside down? We have been studying the book of Philippians, Paul's letter to the church in Philippi all throughout Lent. And what I want to say is this, is that when the world is upside down, that's exactly where Jesus is. Listen to these words from the second chapter of the book of Philippians. It's called the Philippian hymn because it is so beautiful and poetic. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus was the ultimate in downward mobility, emptying himself in humility, giving all that he had for our sake. When everything is upside down, that's exactly where Jesus is, standing right in the middle of it alongside you, working from the inside to make things better again. You know, this last week, my brother sent me photos of a church in Dovre in rural Minnesota. The name of the church was the Norwegian Lutheran Church. In 1908, a tornado hit this church hard, and it literally turned the building upside down. Imagine what it felt like to see that church turned upside down. In so many ways, that resembles what some of us are experiencing right now. Now, but remember that when the world is upside down, that's where Jesus is, working inside to turn things around and right side up even better than they were before. This is what we can hope. This is what we can trust. This is the basis of our faith. Even though this church building was turned upside down, the church continued because it was the people of God baptized into Jesus Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit. That church building was rebuilt later on, and it was renamed Our Savior's Lutheran Church. And so this Holy Week, we remember our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ gave us an example of humility and of emptying ourselves, as St. Augustine asked, Do you wish to be great? Do you wish to rise? Begin by descending. Are you planning to build a structure that will pierce the clouds? Lay first the foundation of humility. The higher your structure is to be, the deeper must be its foundation. As we see Jesus enter into Jerusalem today, riding on a donkey, I remember what Martin Luther said. Our faith is a living, busy, active, mighty thing. We continually strive for a deeper understanding of what the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ means for the world, and doing so puts us right where God wants us to be, in the thick of life. As we hear stories of people giving of themselves in the thick of life today, of medical personnel working around the clock to keep us healthy, of business and community leaders stretching themselves to ensure that vital services remain strong. I remember that in times of trouble, Christians have an opportunity to show their true character. As our social distance becomes greater, we can become emotionally closer. There's a group of over 24 volunteers here at Living Lord who are calling all the member households, especially those who are at risk, those who are at 60 or older in age or who have prior health problems, just to check in with them and to create that emotional bond and that relationship that we have together in Christ. Many of the people that are called have said, I feel so close and so connected to the church right now, even though we are not together. When everything is upside down, we stand in the middle with Jesus at our side, who is putting things right side up again and better than before. One final photo I'll show you is of two people, and there are many legends about these two. The man on the left was named Victor, and he was persecuted and tortured for his faith by the Emperor Marcus Aurelius in the ancient Roman Empire. The woman on his right might have been his wife or a relative or a friend or simply someone who admired his courage and faith, and so she stepped out in his behalf to comfort him and to show her faith in Christ as well. 
So she was also persecuted. She lost her life. She was strung up between, and get this coincidence, never a coincidence, she was strung up between two palm trees. She was called a saint. Now, if you look carefully at her hands, you will see a crown in her hands. And this is because she had a vision of the crown of life given by Jesus Christ. And that's how this saint got her name. Because in Latin, crown means or is pronounced corona. And so her name is Saint Corona. Now, there are many legends about her. And recently, she's been called the patron saint of the fight against epidemics. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but what we do know about her story is that from her faith in Christ, she stepped out to help others, in particular, Saint Victor. So when you hear of the coronavirus that is taking so many lives in our world today, think also of the crown of life that was given by Jesus Christ. What do we do when the world is upside down? That's exactly where Jesus is. So hang tight to Christ. Have faith. Have hope. Because Christ is working inside things to turn the world back right side up again, better than before. Amen.
are washed away, washed away. Together as one, we pray for the world, the church, and all those in need. God of mercy, awaken your church to new proclamations of your faithfulness. By your Spirit, give us bold and joyful words to speak, that we sustain the weary with the message of your redemption. Send your saving help to all who suffer. Tend to all who cry out for relief. Be with those in our community, as we pray especially this week for healing and comfort for Carly, Nick, Dennis, Ken, Shirley, Sandy, and all those we speak from our lips or silently in our hearts. Be with those in our community that are performing essential duties. Be with first responders, doctors and nurses, and hospital staff. Keep safe grocery store workers, delivery drivers, and all those whose work keeps us safe at home. Be with our community leaders as they face difficult decisions and to help them keep a mindful heart to what is best for all people. Prepare our hearts, O Lord, during this holy week. In all things, show us the ways that you call us to die to self, to live for you, and to give of ourselves for the sake of others. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast mercy. And we ask you to hear us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So we thank you for the wine and for the bread For we see the life you gave and the blood you shed And we remember your wondrous love You gave your body, you shed your blood We are so glad that you joined us today for this Palm Sunday worship. 
please join us again throughout Holy Week on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and finally for our celebration on Easter. And now please hear this blessing, that when the world is upside down, God is with you. Christ is alongside of you, and you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the road from Jericho As the people followed him around And on the road from Jericho And towards the end he had to know There's no turning back from the road he's on When you're headed down the road from Jericho Last long walk, so you take it kind of slow. With the sun on your face and the dirt between your toes, it's your last long walk on the road from Jericho. Two blind men sat beside the road and heard the cries of here is the Lord. They cried out for his mercy through the crowd. They shouted, Lord, please give us sight. Heal our eyes, let us see your light. While the crowd pushed and shouted them down. The Lord reached out and touched their eyes. Those dead eyes came right back to life. And those unblind men Praised him, God's own son. And on that road from Jericho, the crowd gets bigger the further you go. Singing and shouting goes on a blessed song. When you're headed down the road from Jericho, it's your last long walk, so you take it kind of slow. And the dirt between your toes It's your last long walk on the road from Jericho The self-righteous told him, tell them stop And he responded, I will tell them not See the stones for you lie in wait upon the ground The crowd cries out even stronger still Hosanna to the Blessed One Coming from the road to Jericho When you're headed down the road from Jericho It's your last long walk so you take it kind of slow With the sun on your face and the dirt between your toes it's your last long walk on the road from Jericho When you're headed down the road from Jericho Hosanna, Hosanna It's your last long walk so you take it kind of slow Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord With the sun on your face and the dirt between your toes Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord It's your last long walk God and King of Man on the road to God's salvation.